A preschool is an educational establishment offering early childhood education to children between the ages of 3 and 5. Prior to the commencement of compulsory education at primary school, they may be privately operated or government runs, and the costs may be subsidized. Terminology The following terms may be used for educational establishments for this age group. Kindergarten is used in many parts of world, with the exception of the UK, as well as the US, Canada, and some states of Australia, where the term is used to refer to the first stage of compulsory education offered at the age of five. Pre-K is an initiative to improve access to preschool for disadvantaged children in the US. Nursery school, grade zero, which is also sometimes classified as a mixture between preschool and a school regime. Pre-primary, history, origins in an age when school was restricted to children who had already learned to read and write at home. There were many attempts to make school accessible to the children of women who worked in factories or were orphans. In 1779, Johann Friedrich Oberlin and Louise Schepeler founded in Strasbourg an early establishment for caring for and educating preschool children whose Parents were absent during the day. At about the same time, in 1780, similar infant establishments were established in Bayern in 1802. Pauline Zerlippa established a preschool center in Detmold. In 1816, Robert Owen, a philosopher and pedagogue, opened the first British and probably globally the first infant school in New Lanark, Scotland. His system was successful in producing obedient children with basic literacy and numeracy. Samuel Wildespin opened his first infant school in London in 1819, and went on to establish hundreds more. He published many works on the subject, and his work became the model for infant schools throughout England and further afield. Play was an important part of Wildespin's system of education. He is credited with inventing the playground. In 1823, Wildespin published on the importance of educating the infant poor. Based on the school, he began working for the Infant School Society the next year, informing others about his views. He also wrote The Infant System for developing the physical, intellectual, and moral powers of all children from one to seven years of age. Spread Countess Teresa Brunswick, who had known and been influenced by Johann Heinrich Pestalozzi, was influenced by this example to open an Angyalkert on the 27th of May 1828 in her residence in Buda, the first of 11 care centers that she founded for young children. In 1836 she established an institute for the foundation of preschool centers. The idea became popular among the nobility and the middle class and was copied throughout the Hungarian kingdom. Friedrich Froebel opened a play in activity institute in 1837 in the village of Bad Blankenburg in the Principality of Schwarzburg Rudolstadt, Thuringia, which he renamed Kindergarten on 28 June 1840. Women trained by Froebel opened kindergartens throughout Europe and around the world. The first kindergarten in the United States was founded in Watertown, Wisconsin in 1856 and was conducted in German. Elizabeth Peabody founded America's first English-language kindergarten in 1860 and the first free kindergarten in America was founded in 1870 by Conrad Poppenhusen, a German industrialist and philanthropist who also established the Poppenhusen Institute and the first publicly financed kindergarten in the United States was established in St. Louis in 1873 by Susan Blow. Canada's first private kindergarten was opened by the Wesleyan Methodist Church in Charlottetown, Prince Edward Island in 1870 and by the end of the decade, they were common in large Canadian towns and cities. The country's first public school kindergartens were established in Berlin, Ontario in 1882 at Central School. In 1885, the Toronto Normal School opened a department for kindergarten teaching. Elizabeth Harrison wrote extensively on the theory of early childhood education and worked to enhance educational standards for kindergarten teachers.
by establishing what became the National College of Education in 1886. Head Start was the first publicly funded preschool program in the U.S., created in 1965 by President Johnson for low-income families. Only 10% of children were then enrolled in preschool. Due to large demand, various states subsidized preschool for low-income families in the 1980s. Developmental Areas the most important years of learning begin at birth. During these early years, humans are capable of absorbing more information than later on. The brain grows most rapidly in the early years. High-quality teachers and preschools can have a long-term effect on improving outcomes for disadvantaged students. The areas of development that preschool education covers varies. However, the following main themes are typically offered personal, social, economic and emotional development, communication, talking and listening, world knowledge and understanding, creative and aesthetic development, mathematical awareness, physical development, physical health, play, teamwork, self-help skills, social skills, scientific thinking, literacy, Preschool systems observe standards for structure, process and alignment components. Curriculum is designed for differing ages. For example, counting to 10 is generally after the age of 4. Some studies dispute the benefits of preschool education, finding that preschool can be detrimental to cognitive and social development. A study by UC Berkeley and Stanford University on 14,000 preschools revealed that while there is a temporary cognitive boost in pre-reading and math, preschool holds detrimental effects on social development and cooperation. Research has also shown that the home environment has a greater impact on future outcomes than preschool. Preschools have adopted various methods of teaching, such as Montessori, Waldorf, Head Start, High Scope, Reggio Emilia Approach, Bank Street and Forest Kindergartens. Funding While a majority of American preschool programs remain tuition-based, Support for some public funding of early childhood education has grown over the years. As of 2008, 38 states and the District of Columbia invested in at least some preschool programs, and many school districts were providing preschool services on their own, using local and federal funds. The United States spends 0.4% of its GDP or $63 billion on preschool education. The benefits and challenges of a public preschool reflect the available funding. Funding can range from federal, state, local public allocations, private sources, and parental fees. The problem of funding a public preschool occurs not only from limited sources but from the cost per child. As of 2007, the average cost across the lower 48 states was $6,582. Four categories determine the cost of public preschools. Personnel ratios, personnel qualifications, facilities and transportation, and health and nutrition services. These costs depend heavily on the cost and quality of services provided. The main personnel factor related to cost is teacher qualifications. Another determinant of cost is the length of the school day. Longer sessions cost more. Collaboration has helped fund programs in several districts. Collaborations with Area Head Start and other private preschools helps fund a public preschool in one district. We're very pleased with the interaction. It's really added a dimension to our program that's been very positive. The National Head Start Bureau has been looking for more opportunities to partner with public schools. Torn Schultz of the Bureau states, we're turning to partnership as much as possible, either in funds or facilities to make sure children get everything necessary to be ready for school. Advocacy The universal preschool movement is an international effort to make preschool available to families, as it is for primary education. Various jurisdictions and advocates have differing priorities for access, availability and funding sources. In the United States, most preschool advocates support the National Association for the Education of Young Children's Developmentally Appropriate Practices. 
The National Association for the Education of Young Children and the National Association of Child Care Professionals publicize and promote the idea of developmentally appropriate practice. Although many institutions have not taken that approach, NAEYC claimed that although 80% of kindergarten classrooms claim to be developmentally appropriate, only 20% actually are.